Our scripture lesson today comes from the Gospel of Luke. We're going to be over the next few weeks making our way through the Sermon on the Plain in the Gospel of Luke, which is connected uh, very closely with the Sermon on the Mount that is found in the Gospel of Matthew. If you'd like to follow along in your pew Bible, I invite you to do that. I'm reading from the New Living Translation, Luke chapter 6, verses 17 through 26. When they came down from the mountains, the disciples stood with Jesus on a large level area, surrounded by many of his followers and by the crowds. There were people from all over Judea and from Jerusalem and from as far north as the seacoasts of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their disease, and those troubled by evil spirits were healed. Everyone tried to touch him because healing power went out from him, and he healed everyone. Then Jesus turned to his disciples and said, God blesses you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. God blesses you who are hungry now, for you will be satisfied. God blesses you who weep now, for in due time you will laugh. What blessings await you when people hate you and exclude you and mock you and curse you as evil because you follow the Son of Man? When that happens, be happy. Yes, leap for joy, for a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember... Their ancestors treated the ancient prophets that same way. What sorrow awaits you for those who are rich? For you have your only happiness now. What sorrow awaits you who are fat and prosperous now? For a time of awful hunger awaits you. What sorrow awaits you who laugh now? For your laughing will turn to mourning and sorrow. What sorrow awaits you? who are praised by the crowds, for their ancestors also praised false prophets. This is the word of God for the people of God. Well, to appreciate today's gospel, this the beginning of the Sermon on the Plain, it helps for us to understand how Luke leads up to it. At the beginning of chapter 6, you see that Jesus and the disciples are in a grain field, and they are both harvesting and eating grain, and some Pharisees come and they confront them, and they ask this question, why are you doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? Because at that time, harvesting and eating the grain would be considered work and you were not to work on the Sabbath. And then the next scene is in a synagogue where Jesus heals a withered man's hand on that same Sabbath day. And the text said that the scribes and the Pharisees were filled with fury. And they discussed what they might do to Jesus. It's obvious that Jesus knew firsthand the consequence of opposition that he would face when he chose to do what was abnormal in the eyes of the normal, but he did it anyway. This reminds me of a book by Pastor Craig Groeschel. It's entitled weird because normal isn't working. Pastor Craig is the founder and senior pastor of Life Church. It's a church that started in Oklahoma. It has multiple locations in 10 different states now. And his, be- his book speaks to the fact that normal people are stressed and overwhelmed and exhausted, many of their relationships are strained at best. Even though we live in one of the most prosperous places on earth, people are living paycheck to paycheck, unable to get ahead. Simply put, according to Groeschel, our normal 
isn't working. And I am certain that Jesus would agree. In today's gospel, Jesus, after spending all night praying on a mountain, which that in and of itself is weird, I mean, all night praying up on a mountain, that seems strange. But it was then that he called his disciples together and they came down and we start to hear these things that we often know as the Beatitudes. Those who are blessed, blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are those who are hungry now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who are mocked or spoken evil of because you follow the Son of Man. It is so normal for us to ask the question, is that really true? Are we really blessed when bad things like that happen to us? And then the second piece of our scripture today were the, four, were the four sorrows. What sorrow awaits you who are rich for you have your happiness now? What sorrow awaits you who are fat and prosperous now for a time of hunger awaits you? And we ask again, is that really true? Are we really in for it? When good things like this happen to us? I'm not sure that I like this direction of Jesus' speech. It seems like a complete reversal of all of the values that we hold dear in our world. We try desperately to avoid what Jesus says is blessed. Who in the world wants to be poor? Who in the world wants to be hungry? Who in the world wants to be sad, rejected, excluded? We go to great lengths to prevent these things from happening in our lives. And then the sorrows list. Aren't these things that we want? Maybe we don't need to be super wealthy, but comfortable is nice. And maybe we don't need to have our stomachs completely full all of the time. But we don't really want to go hungry. We want to be happy. We want to have good reputations. We want to be included. And what in the world is wrong with that? Since what Jesus is saying sounds pretty weird... How do we make sense of it? Well, the first thing that we need to do with this sermon is to not hear it as a set of commands. Jesus isn't telling us to go out and get poor or to learn how to weep or to place ourselves in positions where we will be persecuted. The more that we hear these words as commands or things that we're supposed to do, the less that they make sense. In fact, they're not spoken as commands at all. Read carefully. Jesus isn't giving orders here. He isn't telling them. He isn't telling us. He isn't telling anyone to do anything. So if these words of Jesus are not meant to be marching orders for us, what are they to be? What are they about? They are about who God is and what God's kingdom looks like in the world. They are about how God blesses his people, those gathered on the plain that day and us gathered here in worship this morning. 
God blesses us with things that the world could never give. Do you remember Jesus saying, my kingdom is not of this world? So when Jesus talks about the blessings of God and God's kingdom, we should expect to see a lot of things we hardly ever experience in this world. I mean, where in the world do you and I experience consistently the forgiveness of sins? Where in this world do we experience sincere prayer and sincere care from and with others? Where in the world do we ever experience this kind of consistent grace except in relationship with God? At the beginning of the Sermon on the Plain, I believe that Jesus is painting kingdom pictures hoping that they will inspire us who live in a normal world to give up normalcy and be weird. For instance, you and I know a world where leadership usually means lording authority over someone else. Jesus doesn't want it that way among his disciples. Leadership is about servanthood, and that's not normal in our world. You and I know a world where power rules with a mighty and oppressive and sometimes even an abusive hand, and Jesus doesn't want it that way among his disciples. Power is to be implored or employed with compassion and gentleness and kindness and always for the benefit of others, and that is not the way it is most of the time in this world. You and I know a world where most people think that might means right and get them before they get us, but this morning's scripture passage is Jesus giving us a sneak peek A sneak peek at God, a special peek at God's kingdom, a special look at God's people, hoping to move us to a higher vision of life, one that doesn't root itself in the world, but instead roots itself in a loving God. If you want to be normal, then by all means, keep the upside-down, topsy-turvy, abnormal values of God's kingdom at a distance. But if you want something better, if you want something better this Lenten season and beyond, then it's time to embrace being weird with a big bear hug. A hug that even during this corona-cautious season is guaranteed to bring healing and wholeness and hope to you and to a world who needs it so very much. Amen.